Anita Joseph, who is a Nollywood actress, um, has disagreed with married women who claim they were raped by their husbands. Questions why they got married if they won't satisfy their husbands. Take a look at the video. Um, yeah. There's something I really want us to talk about today. Sorry. You. Us. Okay. Um, someone I know said she said I can share this story. So it's kind of delicate, but it's something that can be talked about. She said her husband raped her. Anita, what do you think? What do I do? Should I go to the police? Should I, who do I report to? Women affair? Hmm. I say, you want me to judge? She said, yes. You want me to advise you? She said, yes. I said, okay. Which one you say your husband rape you? Are you mad? Which one you say rape you? Bo, bo, wait, bo, look, look, yes, let's, let's look at this thing objectively now. Okay, wait. What if, but it's true now because they say rape is sexual intercourse without consent. Okay. Mm -hmm. For people you don't know, you don't know somebody and you just want to put your hands on her and you just want to have sex with her, it's wrong. It's wrong. How your prick even stand? How did you even do it? How did you get aroused? How how we do you? Or you don't understand anyhow? But if it's your, if it's your husband, where do you go there? Go to? <laughs> no, seriously, babe. Okay. okay. He's your husband. Why you no give her? After why you no give her? She begin laugh. I said no, no, no. Seriously, you rape her, and you no like her. Want to report to the <laughs> Okay, joining us to make, um, is this sense or no sense of this um, short clip that we have just watched? It's, I think it's about four minutes long, but she was basically saying the same thing from beginning to the end. It's um, Ebele Molua, I hope I pronounced that right. She is a very, she's a feminist and she has lent her voice, matched protest and done a lot to stand against rape in the country entirely. So thank you for joining us, Ebele. Thank you for having me. I'm sure you've watched that video, the, even the full clip, right? I have. How would you I respond have. or address that? Um, I think a lot of women are yet to free themselves from the mental slavery that is attached to marriage, the institution of marriage. So marriage in itself, the institution of marriage was created to oppress women. And I guess in this new day and age, we try to redefine what it means, but there's this huge part of marriage that automatically means that once the man has come to pluck you, the flower, from your household, he automatically has gotten consent. Automatically. I and mean, that's where this whole bride price thing comes in. We've paid on your head. So automatically, anything your husband wants to do to you, He's free to. I don't think it's right. I think um, women still have agency, even in the institution of marriage. Because I'm married to you, we have both decided to come together. It does not mean that my agency, my individuality is automatically erased and I don't have any say over what happens to my body. As a woman, you have agency over your body, whether you're single, married, divorced, separated, you have agency over your body and any mentality that makes you think that because you're now with a man in the institution of marriage and suddenly you have no autonomy, it's, it's completely, it, it, it makes absolutely no sense, none whatsoever. I like that you started with the institution of marriage because it's definitely a deep-rooted um, mindset that we've seen several times. There's a lot of things I can pick wrong with that video and how mm -hmm. there is, a, 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 even when she tried to redeem herself, the tone, the tone deafness to the, you know, the severity of rape and just the capture that she's perpetrating in that video is horrible. But my, my I wanted you to touch more on how you can really, I like the word that you used when you said um, we're enslaved. How do you un enslave people, especially women that don't even see that they have a right to 
consent like they have a right to be asked especially in i personally think that in marriage is the more reason why you want to ask me so that they, you know what we're, we're together forever i don't want to make it a prison um mm. so, but how you know because you have been through you've done a lot in terms of advocating and things like that how can we start to mm. really undo this deep-rooted mess that we have found ourselves in i think it's mainly a cultural thing and fortunately unfortunately for us Nigeria is super cultural and the idea of marital rape not existing really stems from bride price. Mm. Um, the idea that once I've paid on your head, then that's it. So I think first of all, pushing for anything in relation to bride price to be completely stopped mm. in whatever form, because it's literally slavery. It's literally paying for somebody. That's, that's it's literally modern day slavery, whatever way we want to paint it or make it look colorful and pretty and lovely. It's a slavery, you're paying for someone. So in every way, we need to first of all push for that to just to stop in every way. Um, and then really the only thing we can do is sensitize people, mm. um, making them understand that, you know, your body is yours, mainly when your body is yours. And then criminalize it. I think it's something that beyond just abolishing the idea of bride, um, bride price, we need to go further Obviously, the justice system, the legal system is something we've been battling for a long time about how the laws to an extent are there, but then they still don't have our back. So we need to go ahead with this particular issue, criminalize marital rape, and then start pushing for it to be enforced, sens sensitizing people, the police, going to communities, especially local communities. That's where you see this happen a lot. Go to the ground, sensitize people, educate people, men and women. Um, yeah, I think those are the main three. So abolishing bride price, mm. criminalizing talking, marital rape, and then sensitizing people. Talking yeah. about abolishing bride price. Mm. Uh -huh. Shaking tables. I mean, I don't know when know. or how possible <laughs> that can be. It's deep. Because yeah. even someone with the level of exposure that you would assume, let me put it that way now, assume that someone mm. like Anita Joseph would have, um, towards mm -hmm. the tail end of her video, she was saying that um, the woman is the property of oh, yeah, the man. Yeah. So she, she equated the woman saying no to his um, sexual advances, to a person buying something, something and not being able to have access to what they have bought. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a... It's a I think it's a twisted conversation, not just deep rooted now. It's, it's twisted mm -hmm. and something that works mm -hmm. with. I like the word you use or the phrase you use, mental slavery. But how exactly do we begin to make people understand that bride price is something that um, the initial aim of bride price, I don't think it was, was for slavery. It was to show respect. It was to show respect, but now it has been misconstrued. So how do we maybe go back to the real aim of bride price? or even abolish it at all. And of course, you mentioned again that um, the legalities, the laws are actually support marital rape. That's what it is. Let's just call it what yeah. it is. So how do we also change that part of the law? Honestly and truly, th there's no, I, I, I can't think of, I can't think of. So we had this um, conversation this one time where we brought a, a leader in the community, a chief, um, and some pastor and whatever, and we're talking about the whole idea of starting from the grassroots. So abolishing bread price, because it's such a cultural thing, the, 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 the honest truth is the only thing you can do is talk. Um, go to the grassroots, go to the community leaders, go to the chiefs, go to make them understand. Like it, it, The only thing we can really do is sensitize. And at some point, when this conversation came up a lot, I realize it's gone so deep that to an extent we almost have to wait for an entire generation to pass mm. before we can like start doing this because the generation in which it started it's a long time ago before i was born before most of us were born um and it's something that our parents taught us it's something that it, it's, it's embedded in our in our whole system and function the way we are in Nigeria. so it's almost like now that this new generation is starting to bring more awareness to it and understanding that you know it's a thing it's almost like we have to wait for an entire generation to pass the generation that is already stuck in it and it's like there's no going back it's, it's done and start with this new generation or start with the generation that is closest to saving okay. um, and really all we can do is sensitize people there's there's really the law is against us the culture is against us the whole nation is against us it's 
I mean, waiting for a whole generation, I think that's the only only solution that is looking possible mm. from my own perspective. But what would you want to say, um, to wrap up, what would you want to say to any woman out there who has got the kind of mentality that an, an Sadrisev has got right now? What would you want to say to her? I think just know that there's more to you than a man. There's mm. more to your person, even as a wife. You can love someone too much, be in a partnership. I mean, I've never been married, so I can't fully speak. But you can own yourself, your body, your agency, and it is not wrong. Mm. And if you ever feel like you're stuck in that place, there are many people who are here to listen to you, to, to be there for you, to help you get out of that situation. If you know, if you, at any point you have doubts and you think, no, nah, I want to be out of this, there are people who will be there to help you, protect you. Just trust your guts. All right. Thank you for your time, Ibele. Thank you. Okay. That was very interesting. Um, I was shocked to my bones until I started reading the comment sections and I realized that she's speaking for a lot of people. Yes, yeah, she is. A lot of people. So I think it's interesting that I'm sharing spaces with uh, <laughs> humans, certain human beings. But I like that she brought up, um, what's it called? Bride Price. I really like that conversation. I personally don't think I want it to be eradicated. I would have loved for, loved for us to be re-educated and redefine it again. But um, I think that that opinion can sit in my heart because um, it's, it's very flimsy and very overly optimistic. And I don't think we'll ever get there. So the, other, the only other option is to agree with her and say, you know, just take it out completely. But you have to look at it as that is a lot of people's means to get out of poverty. So mm. at the end of the day, it's still going back this to... This ridiculous. And when she talks about um, in, in, um, institution, in, the institution of marriage being slavery, it was because of poverty. The whole thing was that you get the woman out of poverty so that she can be somebody else and she wasn't anything without the man mm. so um if you start to empower women especially economically you see that a lot of these things will start to fade away like yep. if the woman doesn't need to actually marry for money then why does she need the woman to pay the man to pay anything so a lot of it has to do with empowerment yeah it's definitely poverty because i've heard um people maybe just passing or jokingly say say to a man who has got a lot of girls that uh, you're going to really make a lot of money, mm. basically waiting for them to be exactly. right for the bride price time exactly. to come and then the ridiculous list. Um, but it, it also goes to show how, um, how, how much of an abusive environment that we have created. Yeah. Remember when we had the conversation with um, um, Ekene and even Ibele and Co, and we talked about how um, men majority of men in Nigeria can actually be classified as a rapist yeah. or an abuser or a supporter of the you abuser. Know, and it's, it's not even because they, they, they know that it's wrong and they want to do it. It's now a case of they don't even understand that what they're doing it's is wrong. wrong. So I like how she said that it's going to take a whole generation to pass away for this <laughs> to, be, to be corrected because that's how I de definitely feel about it. But for those who understand their rights already, I think it's, it also boils down to getting married or be with someone who with actually right, loves you. Yeah, because I, I don't think a man who loves you wants to yeah. have you when Did you, are you I don't not know if interested. you also noticed how do you enjoy that? I don't know if you noticed in the video, I kind of it kind of made me um sad a bit because I thought, oh okay, she's married to a smart man because yeah, he was like, she, whoa, she whoa, has, whoa, 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 lucky. Let me and put then, it that way. But she he still gave in to her. her she, he's not as intelligent because as he, he wanted loves to. Her. Oh, he's really dumb. Oh goodness. Okay. Very dumb. <laughs>